Good morning everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a really fun one. We are going to be doing a little redecorating of my room, specifically my bookshelf. We're going to be going through my bookshelf, all the books on my physical TBR, and also reorganizing the bookshelf. I actually did this I think at the beginning of October and it's already in need of some rearranging um, and I'm actually thinking of moving it to a different spot in my room. That way, when I'm shooting video like this, you guys can see it in my back corner. So first, let me give you guys a little preview of what my room currently looks like and then kind of what I'm imagining. Okay guys, so this is what my room currently looks like. This is what it looks like when you walk in. My bed, decorated for Christmas, my bookshelf right there, and then my nightstand right here. What I'm picturing is just swapping the two, putting my nightstand over here and my bookshelf in the back corner. That way, when I'm filming from this direction, you guys are seeing my bookshelf right there. I just honestly think that'll look really good. And I usually have a plant up here and she just has not been doing well. Here she is. She's actually in my bathroom right now. I watered her and I just took off all the dead leaves. But this plant, it, her name's Sunny. She does such a good job, but recently she hasn't been. I genuinely believe that's just because of her location in my room. Okay, I think that's the goal. The only issue that I think I'm gonna run into is on this side, the outlet is right here whereas on this side it's r directly behind the middle of my nightstand so a you can't see cords which I like and b like my phone charger and stuff reach me um so I did pull out an extension cord that I had in our office that I am planning on using and it'll just obviously be shown like that but I don't think it'll be that big of a deal I am considering like swapping these two things or rearranging and I'm hoping I don't have to move over my bed too much to where I have to rearrange my little collage. But I'm gonna take all the books off my shelf really fast because my fiance is coming to actually stop and drop off my ID. We went to a Suki Waterhouse concert and I forgot it in his wallet but I'm gonna make him help me when he's here before he goes to work. So yeah let's get um, moving. Love you, Lennon. Love you. Hey guys, everything's moved and all of my books are currently on my bed and I like can't find a place to sit down. So we're gonna try this again. I think 
I think everything is here. It is a little bit crazy, but we're going to go ahead and hop into the TBR section of this book. I'm pretty excited. I do like how the bookshelf looks right there. It is definitely a very, very weird adjustment right now looking at my room like this, but we're going to try it and if I don't like it, I can always switch it back. But all my books were organized, but they no longer are. So this is going to be really fun to get through and reorganize. It's going to be a long one, so let's get into the video grab and go and then I'm gonna just set it down on the floor and then we'll put all of it on my bookshelf. Before we begin I do want to say all of these are on my physical TBR. These are all my physical TBR books. All the books that I've read are on other bookshelves or they're at home with my parents. So yeah as much as like the TBR cart is really appealing to me I have a TBR shelf. It's bad. Okay, without further ado, let's hop into it. The first two books I have are actually After You and Still Me by Jojo Moyers. This is the second and third book in the, what is it even called? Maybe For You, <laughs> the Maybe For You. So um, yeah, this takes place after the ending, obviously, and I honestly haven't really heard all that much about the two of them but i bought all three of the books on bird books like such a long time ago which is why they look like this and it's funny because the first one is like somewhere in the middle between these two but it doesn't really matter anyway i have these books i do eventually want to get to them and at this point i'm like do i need to reread me before you but then i'm like i don't want to so that's a little bit of why I'm discouraged, but there we have the first two. Moving on, I have three books by Ellen Hillerbrand. I have read one book by her, it was 28 Summers. It was the absolute perfect book. If you're looking to start with Ellen Hildebrand, I personally would recommend 28 Summers, obviously because it's the only book I've read from her, but also just because it's, it's an actual amazing book. 100% recommend it. Um, but yeah, I have three of them. I do think this is probably one of the most popular. It's called The Perfect Couple. I'm pretty sure there is a show adaptation of this currently out, I'm pretty sure. Um, but these to me scream summer, so I'm like, I'm definitely going to read these, but it'll probably be in the summertime. But yeah, so I have The Perfect cu Couple, I have Barefoot, and then I have Golden Girl. So I don't really know what any of them are about, but I i mean, come on, they scream summer beach read. Okay, moving on, we have a, another series, and this is the Maya Banks Rush. Oh no, it's the Breathless Trilogy. So I got, I believe I got the first one at Barnes & Noble, and then I bought the other two on Thrift Books. But I have heard this is sort of like a Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy, but like, is it more YA? No, it's not YA. I just, sorry, I just saw, when it comes to sex, Ash McIntyre has always explored his wilder side. That is not YA. Anyway, I don't really know. They're erotic because, I guess, I, I don't know. Like, what is, what is this resembling? Please tell me. Anyway, moving on. I'm gonna start with these because they're two books that I recently just got from um, I personally got them from the husband of the author and she signed both of them and I'm just so excited about this. It's actually my boss's wife wrote these and they're just so amazing um, from like Goodreads according, according to Goodreads they're awesome and to me it feels like a personal connection because Sarah Henning the author of these books are she is friends with um, Emily Henry and then Jennifer Lynn Barnes and like so many other authors and I'm just like that's so exciting that no I don't necessarily know her but like I have like a two-point connection kind of um but this is from what Justin Sarah's wife told me is about a retelling of sorts of The Little Mermaid and it follows Ursula or the character of Ursula and so it is a duology the first book is called The Sea Witch or just Sea Witch actually and yeah it's funny the the main character or the main character's best friend's name is Anna, and that's my roommate's name, so that's just kind of funny. And it does have a sequel, so that is a, another two on our count. I actually do have another series right here, and that is the Magnolia Park series. Oh, these books are so beautiful. I actually have read the first three, but I'm putting all five on my TBR again, because I think I need to read all of them, like, straight through, back to back to back. 
uh, to fully just like immerse myself and to remember like what's going on in this series. So I am putting all five back onto my physical TBR. Sticking with this series because next I have a Good Girl's Guide to Murder and I just dropped the first book so I'm not going to pick it up. But I actually did read that book but I'm again putting it on my TBR because I feel like I just need to read all three of these like back to back to back. But I have heard great things about it. I, I watched a little bit of the first episode of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder on Netflix when I was getting my nails done last month. So I haven't seen it and I'm like I probably won't watch it until I read all of these books. But this is another series and this is a series I'm actually trying to thrift. I can't remember. I think I had all of the all of the books actually for the mortal instruments the only thing that I didn't like is that they're obviously all not matching but I mean that doesn't really matter oh wait no 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 sorry I lied so these are the shadow hunters I have one and two of the shadow hunters and then for mortal instruments I have three four five six I was kind of considering I might just end up trying to find one that has like the map looking thing but yes I eventually want to read this series and this is a series that I've just been trying to thrift because it's one of those where I'm like I don't really want to buy all the books um, but I will buy them if they're like a dollar a piece I think the only one I bought for full price at Barnes and Noble was the first book of the shadow hunt or no the mortal instruments series which also I have no idea how this like series works because I think it's like three series combined into one like universe so if you guys know let me know onto the floor it goes there is another series that i have i don't actually have all of the books but at one point i was just buying series without knowing if i would like it which is really stupid but that is a touch of darkness by scarlet st Clair, and this is a persephone's retelling i don't know if all of them yeah it looks like all of them follow persephone and hades i don't know how many books are i don't know how many books are published now but like I said, I have the first three and they actually like the, the covers of them are so gorgeous and I do want to read these. I just haven't clearly. This is part of a series and this is part of the A Blood of Ash. No, A Blood and Ash series. I absolutely loved the first two books. I think I liked the third book and then the fourth book I did not like at all and I'm pretty sure this is the fifth book. I had like pre-ordered it because I had been loving the series so much and then the fourth book happened and I just have not like the thought of it I can't imagine. I don't know I'm like if I ever read this I think I'm gonna have to go back into the entire series again um but for right now we're only adding this one book to my physical tbr i guess we're sticking with series because i have another two books that are part of the series and that is alex astor's light lark saga so i actually read light lark when it first came out in 2022 um and i've had night Vane. i've had both of these pre-ordered bought them like i've had i mean this one just came out but i've had both of them for a while but just haven't got into this one specifically and I really do want to um I'm almost at the point where I'm like should I reread Light Lark because it has been two years but I will just say I do think these covers are so gorgeous I wish I had Light Lark to like complete this set but there they are next I have three James Patterson books that my fiance's mom got for free and so she passed them on to me and I'm pretty I think they all might be part of like the Women's Murder Club is what it's called. Maybe this one isn't, but these two are. Um, the Unlucky 13 and then the Eighth Confession and then we have I, Alex Cross. So we have three little mysteries. I've never read James Patterson, but I have heard great things about him. Um, so if you guys like him, let me know. Next we have a novel by Lisa Jewell. This is called Watching You. I was in a huge Lisa Jewell kick a few years ago and I read like four books from her all rated them like four to five stars I'm pretty sure and I just have not got into this one um, but I love it because they are set in England and I think that's super fun and her her thrillers like they're they're like dark they're really they're really dark guys uh, that's all I'm gonna say. We have I Tatuba Black Witch of Salem by Mar Maris Conde. I was supposed to read this for class actually and I did not do that because I was sick or 
something. I can't remember what happened, but I ended up not being able to read this. I actually think I didn't get the book until after the class period, which was bad timing on my part. But it is really short, and I'm like, this is a book that I'll definitely read in 2025, probably. We have The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I have never read this book. Like, this was not a book that I had to read in class, so I've never read this book. And it's so short, and I'm like, I love the movie. I need to read it. This is a book from back when I had Book of the Month, and this was my July 2021. This has been on my TBR since July 2021. Guys, that was almost four years ago. That was three and a half years ago. Um, this is, this takes place in Dublin, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this takes place in Dublin and it's throughout the course of quarantine, which honestly, that's part of the reason where I'm like, uh, do I want to read this? But it is a thriller. And honestly, it doesn't sound bad, but I also am like struggling because I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe if I do a video that's like, specific on thrillers I would read this but right now no. I believe this is another okay this is a historical murder mystery that I got as a gift from my um I got as a gift from my fiance's dad and it's called The Body on the Bed by Leonard Krishtalka I think um and he is, he actually worked at the University of Kansas which if you guys don't know I'm getting my master's there in literature currently and he sets his books around like Lawrence related or Kansas related history and so I think that's pretty interesting and so definitely want to read this eventually and it's signed which is really cool this is a book that I know is like coveted by a lot of people and it's the Atlas Six. Um, my thing about this is I'm like, would I ever read Atlas Six? Probably, but I'm like, do I read this one or do I read like the actual like published one now? And I know it's like an entire series now because I know this book. I've heard that it's very different than the actual published version. So I don't know, but I will say it is sick looking. I'm sad because the ends are kind of coming up, but I don't, I can't remember when I bought this, but it was definitely, I mean, it was a while ago. This is a book that I got this summer. It is by Coco Mellers and it is called Blue Sisters and it's actually signed and I got it um, at Blackwell's in Oxford, actually. I'm kind of glad I kept my receipt because that's kind of sweet to know, but it's a little damaged from traveling but I read Cleopatra and Frankenstein by her. I'm back. Uh, my camera died, so I tried to organize it, but well, I did my best. Um, when we were last talking, I was talking about Blue Sisters. I got the first book that she wrote, or at least the first book that I read from this author when I was in London for the first time. And so I got the second book. I'm, they're not a series, but it's her second book and I got it. Pretty excited about that. Um, but yeah, Blue Sisters. We're gonna start with this file because it's the craziest. This is like my nonfiction classics section. Um, and so first we have Men Without Woman, Women. I actually am unaware of how to pronounce this author's name, so I'm sorry. Um, but I've heard really great things about him. And I think it's Haruki Murakami. I could be wrong though. Um, I've heard really great things about him and I definitely want to read this. It is a collection of stories. I have Emily Dickinson's Envelope Poems. I believe I got this for a graduation gift or a Christmas gift, I can't remember. But Emily Dickinson wrote her poems on envelopes and then um, they like show an image of it and then they show a translation of the poem. So really excited about this. I just think it's a really cool concept. And Emily Dickinson is probably, I'm pretty sure she's my favorite American poet. Um, so yeah. I have a really cool book. This is called The Inevitable Queer Volume 1 by Jojo Katsbulas. I went to high school with him and he has a blog that he posts um, personal stories or anecdotes. And he created a little collection of some of his um, poems or his you know experiences into a book and so i was able to purchase this which i'm really excited about um 
definitely gonna have to read this in 2025. I have a book that I bought at a random like sale, one dollar book sale on campus and it is called um, You Too Could Write a Poem and it's by David Orr and it's a collection of reviews and essays by David Orr um, and he is a really well-known critic and so I think it'd be pretty inspirational and it's uh, helpful, critical to my own writing. So we have that one. We have such a great poet, Maggie Nelson. This is her collection, Bluets. It's such a good little um, collection. I've actually only read some bits and pieces of this. I've never actually read the entire collection. So I definitely want to read this in its entirety, but pretty excited about this. Next we have Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kim Kimmer. <laughs> And I don't really know, I think this is an essay, or it's several essays, and this was the KU Common book a couple years ago, so I got my copy for free, which is why I, of course, have it. Um, but I have heard really great things about it, and I've seen it in bookstores, like, everywhere, so I know it's well-liked. Um, it's about indigenous wisdom, scientific knowledge, and the teaching of plants, so it sounds really interesting. So I, I do eventually want to read this. Then we have a poetry collection that just got ruined a little bit, which I am pretty sad about, but it's fine. It's by Hanif Abdurraqib, and he came to Lawrence, and I actually got his new collection signed, which is really awesome. He had a such a beautiful poem in here during his reading. I wish I could remember what it was, but it is called There's Always This Year on Basketball and Ascension. Um, but, I mean, it's not all just about basketball of course but I am very excited to read this the poems that he read when he came and spoke were just phenomenal another poetry collection and that is called the summer of dead birds it's actually a signed copy which is pretty cool I honestly just thought the the sound of it and then the cover was just so sick and that is actually why I ended up getting this collection I have I found a new love for poetry last year if you can't tell and I'm like, I have so many collections now and I'm like, I need to catch up. This is a collection of essays, but it is by a poet and it is by Ross Gay. It is called The Book of Delights. Um, he also came to Lawrence a few years ago. I didn't have the opportunity to see him, but I've heard such great things about him. And so I'm definitely looking forward to reading this one. Their uh, poetry, it actually has poetry, nonfiction, and fiction in it. And this is a collection that I can't remember where it was published, but my friend actually gave it to me because their poem is featured in the non-fiction uh, section, I believe. Yes, it is. Um, I I believe it was their previous um, university, but I can't. English and Creative Writing Department at Columbia uh, College, Chicago. I have a memoir by Chloe Cooper Jones. She actually came to Lawrence as well, and I got this copy signed, which is pretty fun. But this is just about her experience as a disabled woman and as a mother, and it she it was a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize, which is really incredible. And so I'm really excited to read this. She was an awesome speaker too, and so looking forward to this one. Um, Mary Oliver, A Selected Essays. Mary Oliver is so great. I believe, I actually think my friend Major introduced me to her with her book called, or her collection of S or poems called Dog Songs. And that poetry book was so good. And so when I saw this at the Raven, I ended up getting it. Actually, no, I think actually, I think actually Major got this for me. I think Major may have got this for me because I loved Dog Songs so much. But it is a collection of essays and I'm so excited because I just love her. Yeah. Then we have a memoir by JC Duggard and it's The Stolen Life or A Stolen Life where she was um, abducted and she was gone for 18 years. And this is kind of her story and yeah, pretty interesting. I have She Said by Jodi Cantor and Megan Toby, which is the winner. They were winners of the Pulitzer Prize, which that's such an incredible prize. I know it's now a movie, which I want to read it and then also watch the movie because I've heard, I mean, I've heard great things, but it's all about breaking the sexual harassment story that inspired the Me Too movement, I'm pretty sure. But the camera keeps on dying and the sun is setting and I have to leave soon, so we're going to rapid fire go through these. 
I, while my camera is charging, I put a few books on the shelf. We're just sticking with classics and poetry. We have The Woman in White, Much Ado About Nothing, The Bluest Eye, Love by Angela Carter, 1984 by George Orwell, The Color Purple by Alice Walker, Virginia Woolf's Orlando, I said The Duar Burbeals by Thomas Hardy, Virgin Suicides, Paradise by Toni Morrison, Oscar, Oscar Wilde's The Picture of Dorian Gray, Philip Bronte's Jane Eyre, Captivating by John and C.C. Eldridge. Praying the Scriptures for Your Marriage by Jodi Burnett. We have How to Put Love First by Sadie and Christian Huff. Ulysses by James Joyce. Changing Moves by Chad Parks. In a Merry Heart in a Martha World. Joan Didion's The Year of Magical Thinking. I Will Teach You to Be Rich by Ramit Sethi. Atomic Habits by James Clear. I have read this, but I think I'm going to try to read it again in 2025. We have Save the Cat Writes a Novel, the last book on novel writing you'll ever need. And then our last book in this section is All About Love by Bell Hooks. Moving on to my books that are like darker, I guess. I have A Certain Hunger by Chelsea G. Summers. This cover is sick. Things, Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. There's Slow Horses by Nick Heron. And then this pile over here is all of my like literature romance section. I'm just going to go through it really quickly. I have A Little Hope by Ethan Joella. This has been on my TBR since November 2021. It needs to go. Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. She Garmus. She did sign it and she said, I can't wait to read your book. Keep going. So that was really awesome of her. Prince by Sophie Lark. The first book in Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. The Chaperone by Laura Moirardi. And she actually signed this too. And she's actually a professor at the University of Kansas. And called Ove by Frederick Bachman. The book by Sarah Adams. Free Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Eileen by Otessa Mosheth. Masha. Earth We Are Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Wong. He signed this as well. So cool. Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. Matchmaker's List by Sonia Lolly. Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Sex and Vanity by Kevin Kwan. I Love Your Life by Sophie Kinsella. I actually have two books by Beth O'Leary and that is The Road Trip and then The Wake Up Call. Yes, we're almost done, don't worry. We have Writers and Lovers by Lily King. Then we have One Day by David Nicholas. We have Ariadne by Jennifer C. We have Milk Fed by Melissa Broder. We have Ghost by Dolly Alterton. Summer Job by Lizzie Dent. And our last four books, or three books actually, is Maggie O'Farrell. Carol's My Lover's Lover, Lectra by Jennifer Saint, and Bunny by Mona Abad. So those are all our books and I really need to put these on my bookshelf. I'm going to charge my camera a little bit and then we'll come back and talk about my bookshelf. Lots of books. Okay, hey guys. So here's a part where I tell you somehow I recorded on slow-mo. I've never done this. I use a Sony camera and I, I don't even know. I must have clicked a button. But here's my finished bookshelf. I am obsessed with it. Sunny, who is in recovery, is on top. We have my rainbow and then we kind of get into an assortment of books. At the bottom here, I am showing you my classics and my nonfiction. This is pretty general for me because I like kind of keeping it out of the way. Um, I do have to have stacks on all of them because... Um, I just have too many books, but here's me saying that I have way too many classics and nonfiction because I actually had to put extra onto my third shelf, which I've never had to do before, which is kind of crazy. So I am like adding more of these to my 2025 goal. And then on this shelf, these are like my darker books, my fantasy, my thriller, any book that's basically black is on this shelf just because I like the theme of it. And also their genres are pretty similar. I also have a little rain stick on there that my friend Kristen made. And then, like I said earlier, this is kind of my catch-all shelf. I have the Ellen Hildebrand. I have everything, like, random. And then this is my rainbow shelf. Definitely my favorite. That's pretty much romance um, and literary fiction. But yeah, this is my catch-all. I'm actually probably going to play with this shelf a little bit just because I feel like it looks a little weird. But overall, this is, like, it's totally fine. Um, oh, here I am saying that, that those series would probably be on my darker shelf. It is so funny that this is in slow-mo right now. I wish I knew what I was saying, but whatever, it's fine. Um, but yeah, I am pretty happy with how my shelf looks. I love it. I'm still getting used to it being in the opposite corner of my room, but overall I think it works well. And yeah, I have my little worm on my bookshelf and I think it's so cute. I got him in London 
and I believe he needs to be there. My little house on the corner there is also from Edinburgh and I want to have a little collection of those houses because I think they're so sweet. But yeah, this is my bookshelf in all her glory with all her knickknacks. And like I said, Sunny is in recovery. I'm hoping that the light in this area will be a lot better for her. And here I am just showing you guys what my room looks like now with all of the switches. And I actually think it looks good. Um, the only complaint I guess I have is what's on my wall right there. But that's totally fine. Um, and then here I am trying to go through my... Um, TBR. I am reading a few books. I'm wait I'm reading The Wall of Winnipeg and Me by Mariana Zapata. Is it Mariana or is it Mariana? And then I have a few Christmas books that I'm showing you here. And yeah, that is basically my um TBR. I also added the Emily Dickinson poetry book to my collection just because I like I said my um nonfiction and poetry section is just overwhelmed. And so I wanted to finish that. But anyways, I will see you guys tomorrow for Vlogmas Day 7. Peace and love. Bye, guys. See you tomorrow.